Hey, I just wanted to create a quick video, hopefully in 10 minutes, um, showing you how to create a software RAID volume and a share on NAS for free version 11. Um, I'm doing it because I got frustrated trying to figure out how to do it and documentation was terrible. Um, YouTube videos could really go over creating ZFS file systems and then how that is created and just not easy uh, to understand and um, my from my perspective I, I might install this on some old PC with some hard drives that I have laying around and it's definitely not going to be uh, optimal for ZFS or, or even for anything uh, remotely uh, important so this is just for, for some temporary storage or, or backup storage not for your primary storage so I just needed to know how to get some hard drives on the network that's it so hopefully this will be done in less than 10 minutes here we go okay so create um log in as uh, the default is admin as for free when you install this you will have no discs uh, i'm using a virtual uh, version of this so that i can play around with it first before i actually install it on hardware so when you have no disk, you can add them by one by one over this plus sign over here uh, i'm not going to bother adding them one by one I'll click import and then here's my disk that I want to add I'm gonna apply changes so now here's the disks uh, very unintuitive what you're gonna to need to do now is assign these devices to some kind of role okay so number one uh, number two uh, number one is import disk number two is assign the device to the to the type so I'm gonna highlight these well actually I don't know if I need to highlight them there I'm gonna to go to format I'm gonna highlight them over here and then I'm gonna assign them to be software RAID okay if they were a single drives you can do ufs for a single drive or fat32 um, if you had more uh better storage meaning uh, large vol large disks and you know ecc ram and and 16 to 32 gigs of ram then you can go with these uh with zfs but for me i'm just going to use software raid for this example and then you go next i don't know what to do next again but when you click next that introduce this field which i'm going to ignore and there's format so you click format and you get some command line or uh, some data output text put output um, telling you what happened click OK and it goes back to next uh, I don't know why so that's very un unintuitive so there you go so now you have your, your disks right number one two three and four now they've been assigned soft raid okay and they are now online I don't know if they were online before okay so now what you need to do is you need to go and uh, create a RAID group of these disks, right? So you're going to go software RAID, and um, you hit the plus sign. Here's your devices. I'm going to highlight all my devices that have been defined for software RAID, right? And then I'm going to give it a name. Uh, since this is there defining their the RAID group, so I'm just going to call it RAID group RG1, right? And it's not intuitive. You need to click this to be able to create and initialize the RAID. You would figure it would be a toggle down here, like an uh, apply or something like that, but no. Now you see cancel, and you, and you don't know what else to do. Well, you have to hit RAID 5 all the way up here to apply it. It's not intuitive at all. Okay, so now you have to apply your changes. After hitting RAID 5, you have to apply your changes after the fact. Makes no sense. Okay, so here's your RAID group RG1 that we just created. And this is just the, the definition of the RAID device, right? You haven't done anything anything yet. You haven't created uh, or formatted anything yet. So you have to go back to management. You got to go to format. And now here's your RAID device that you can format to UFS, right? Because right now there's no file system on it. You see that? There's no file system on it. So you have to put a file system on it very unintuitive next and now we give it a file system label and we'll call this um, um, it's a volume label so I'm just going to call it RG1 vol okay I'm gonna leave all the defaults and this selected RG1 here go next and format so now it's doing uh, what I can uh, consider to be the real formatting, okay? And, and when that is done, this will change. 
So UFS is probably still doing in the background. And I, again, I don't know why you have to hit next. We, we just formatted it. So, all right. Um, now that it's been finished formatting, or it's probably doing it in the background, um, what you need to do is actually mount the device. Okay. And so you come into uh, mount point and you're going to add a mount point. So you're going to leave it as disk. You're going to choose RG1. I'm going to leave it as GPT, mount point name. I'm just going to give it, um, I'm going to call it, um, so this is the RAID 5, right? So this is soft RAID disks. Uh, we'll just call it RG1 disks. There you go. Simple as that. All right, and I can give it a description if you want. RG1 disks. And you see, I used to, I had called it in, in a prior test, uh, RG1 share, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so you're gonna mount it now. What are you gonna mount it as, right? So you're gonna mount it as root and wheel. Uh, you can change, you can create a group and change this, but let's not go over that. I just want to go over removing this, right? So you want to remove other, others, the equivalent of guest in Windows. So you don't want to do that. Now I'm not a, a Unix admin. I'm not a Linux admin. I don't know Unix or Linux very well at all, uh, but I know that the others equals guest and you don't want that, right? So we're just going to create a user later and add it to wheel, even though that's not the right way to do it. I was just going to do that and show it to you. So it's quick. So we'll add this and now we have a mount. So now that we have a mount, right, that's formatted, we can access that uh, data, right? So we have to share it out. So first thing you got to do is enable SIFs. So when you go to system services, nothing is enabled. So you have to enable it first. So you come here and it's all the way on the right side. Now, I, I, it took me three days to find that. I didn't even know I had to enable it. So it's just very unintuitive. And, and I'm just going to leave the, the defaults, okay, for this example. Save and restart. Changes have been resaved. So you go back to services, and now you see that SIFS is enabled. Okay. Uh, once that's done, then you can go ahead and create a share. And that's another thing. It's back in the same place, but one tab over is just uh, to me that's not intuitive. But okay, shares. Name of this share. So I'm just going to call it test share. Right. Already, you can see I have done this before. And you need a comment. And how do I know? Because I've done this before. I don't know why you need a comment. So, uh, and then the path, you can go choose it from the available path. So I only have one, right? Which is RG1 disks, which is the, the mount point that we created earlier. So you mount RG1 disks. So that's the mount point. And I'm gonna leave everything default. I'm not gonna touch anything else. I'm just gonna add it and apply it. There you go, you have a mount and mount it and it's shared out via the name test share. Okay, now we gotta create a user to access this data. So you go to users. Um, normally I would advocate you create a group, maybe a group called NAS and then add this user to NAS and then add NAS to, this, to, the, to the mount. But uh, for now, I'm not gonna go through that. It just gets complicated. It's gonna make it longer than the video longer than I need it to be. So name, um, I'm just gonna call him John Doe. As you can see, I've already had created a John Doe before. And of course, the name is John Space Doe. And I'm just going to give it a simple password. And I'm going to leave everything default. Now, it's the first user, so that the user ID is 1000. But if you have multiple users, it will be a different one. Now, the primary group is going to be wheel. Um, again, I would create a group and make this guy a member of that group. But for, for this example, making a member of wheel is OK. Wheel is the uh, root and the pseudo. So you don't want to be using uh, wheel very, very often. It's just not good practice. But for the purposes of this video, that's fine. So I'm going to add this, leave everything as, uh, else as default. And here's the user. So technically, this user, member of wheel, should be able to access that share, right? So let's, uh, uh, now I'm using Windows 10. Whenever you open a, a Explorer shell in Windows 10, if you go to a network resource, it will automatically try to authenticate as as whoever you are on the laptop or on your I'm on a laptop right now so it will try to authenticate you and then if it's the wrong user then you'll get an error and then you won't be able to connect to it you have problems so I'm going to avoid all that by going to the command line and just do use simple command I'm going to net use now I, I left it as NAS for free as the net BIOS name by default and, and we can even give it a um, a drive letter if we wish all right so I'm going to net use and NAS for free and it was called test share. And we're going to say that we are user uh, John Doe. 
and then we're going to type in the password. So there you go. So now you can go and look at test. Sorry, NAS for free test share. And there you go. You can see into the directory. Now, now that we've authenticated there, we can go and then just uh, UNC over to it, right? So that's going to be NAS for free. And as you can see, I've done that before so as a test prior to this video. Okay, so then you can create a folder here, test folder, and then you can see what the folder permissions are by default. Um, everyone has no permission. However, John Doe has special permission, and we can take a look at what that is, right? John Doe has full control because it's a member of Wheel. If you're a member of Wheel, you have full control, right? There's a group, that's a user. Everyone has none because we took away other, right? That's the guest account, we don't want that. And hopefully this will have helped you in figuring out how to create a basic uh, volume and share in uh, NAS for free. The, the next step for you would be to figure out how to not use the wheel group, right? You might want to create a NAS group and then add John Doe to the NAS group and then make the files, uh, the mount owned by instead of wheel, but by NAS, and, and that will kind of eliminate uh, an, a, um, the wheel group. You don't want to be using the wheel group. Um, and then, you know, throw some data on there and see how it goes. There you go. Hopefully this has helped somebody. Take care.